You wanna get your first travel card, but you don't wanna shell out 500 bucks. Maybe you're new to credit card points and you don't know where to start. The Chase Sapphire Preferred is an ideal card for entry-level travelers due to its relatively low annual fee, ease of use, flexible rewards, and benefits. We'll be doing a comprehensive guide on everything this card has to offer in this video. With so many options available today, we asked the question, is this card still worth it? We'll talk about the most optimal way to use the Chase Sapphire Preferred, and we'll talk about which other cards pair well with it. Getting right into it, at the time of recording, the sign-up offer is 60,000 points after spending $4,000 within the first three months. The entire points thing was very confusing to me in the beginning when I was first getting into credit cards, but at a basic level, think of one point being worth one cent. So 60,000 points would be worth a minimum of $600. But that's not ideal. Later on in the video, we'll talk about more ways you can get more value than this. The annual fee is $95, which is relatively low for a travel card. Most premium travel credit cards will have annual fees anywhere from $395 to $695. But of course, that comes with more robust benefits. Let's dive into some of the spend multipliers, which is one of the main attractions of this card. There are some cards you get for its travel benefits, while others you get for its ability to rack up points quickly. This is a very popular credit card for dining as it earns 3x back in this category, and this covers restaurants and eligible delivery and takeout services. For years, I've actually forgotten that this also covers Uber Eats, Grubhub, and DoorDash. 3x back on dining is also the same earning rate as its big brother card, the Chase Sapphire Reserve, which has an annual fee of $550 per year. You get 3x back on online grocery delivery services, such as Instacart and even food delivery kits such as HelloFresh. This unfortunately excludes Walmart, Target, and wholesale clubs. This card also provides 3x back on streaming services such as Netflix, Hulu, Disney, HBO Max, for example. And it also covers subscription music services such as Pandora or Spotify. You also get 2x back on travel, and this is very broad. Some of the areas it covers are airfare, hotels, taxis, trains, subways, cruises, Airbnbs, parking fees, Ubers, tolls, you name it. You do get 5x back on travel only when you book through Chase Portal. This sounds good on paper, but there's a lot of problems going down this route. It is essentially a third-party site, so making any changes or getting a refund is an absolute nightmare to deal with. You also won't get any hotel benefits if you have status with the chain, such as late checkout, free breakfast, and room upgrades. And more often than not, you'll be paying a little more for booking through the portal compared to, let's say, if you book with the hotel directly. Chase does charge a small fee for this. Right now, the card gives you 5x back on Lyft and 5x back on Peloton until March of 2025. So these are short-term benefits. So this card is a powerhouse when it comes to racking up flexible chase points for your day-to-day -day spend. Next, we'll dive into some of the benefits. This card gets you 25% more value when using the travel portal for bookings using points. Meaning if you book a hotel or flight, those points are worth 1.25 cents per point instead of one cent per point. So that signup offer we discussed being worth $600 is now worth $750. But there are much better ways to redeem your points for more value that we'll talk about later on in the video. This card also grants you a annual $50 hotel credit that can only be used through their travel portal. And this is automatically reimbursed into your account. You might benefit from booking a more budget-friendly stay if you wanna make this credit a little bit easier to use. But $50 is not a lot, and I know plenty of people who don't use this credit at all. This card also grants you a quarterly $15 Instacart credit, as well as Instacart Plus membership, which will waive the delivery fee as well as open up more available delivery time slots for you. Instacart is a grocery delivery service that is linked up to numerous supermarkets such as Costco, Wegmans, and ShopRite, and so on. This card also offers a wide range of travel insurance benefits. I'm not gonna cover every single one of them, but I'll put up a list of benefits on the screen now so you can pause the video and take a look at each one. There's two important benefits I wanna point out here, one of them being the trip delay reimbursement benefit. If your flight was delayed for more than 12 hours, you're eligible for up to $500 in reimbursement for each ticket. And the second benefit I wanna highlight here is their trip cancellation and interruption insurance. You can receive up to $10,000 per person if this happens and up to $20,000 per eligible trip. You also get a 10% anniversary boost to your chase points based on how much you spend on the card that year. So if you spend $20,000 on the card, you'll get 2,000 points. 
Not a huge game changer, but it's something. You also get complimentary Dash Pass, and this covers DoorDash and Caviar. These are both food delivery apps, and this membership grants you free delivery and reduced service fees. And this is only for 12 months, and it's worth about $96. And lastly, there are no foreign transaction fees. When you use a credit card without this, and let's say you're traveling in Asia or Europe, you will be charged about a 3% transaction fee on every single purchase that you make. So this benefit is geared toward traveling abroad. It's honestly nice to have this. One of the main reasons to get this card is for its ability to transfer out to airline and hotel partners, which will greatly amplify the value of its points. It is one of the few Chase credit cards that allow you to transfer out to partners, with the other two being the Chase Sapphire Reserve and the Chase Business Inc. Preferred. Earlier, we talked about the sign-up bonus, which is worth about $750 with the 25% boost if you book through the travel portal. Instead, now we have the ability to directly transfer and convert those Chase points into your hotel or airline's loyalty points. And this opens up the potential to increase the value of those points tremendously. You can easily get three cents per point if you transfer to Hyatt, for example, making those 60,000 points worth $1,800 instead of 750. Or with airlines, I've gotten redemptions for economy flights at five cents per point, which would make those 60,000 points worth $3,000 instead of $750. Of course, you would have to do some researching and calculating if transferring those points would provide you with that outsized value when comparing bookings with various Chase partners. As a simple hypothetical example, if you have a flight that costs $750 and you use the travel portal, it would deplete the entire 60,000 points. Instead, if you find a great redemption at five cents per point, you only need to use 12,000 Chase Euro points versus 60,000 from earlier. You just have to calculate the cash value versus the point value beforehand. If we look at a list of Chase's partners, there are many great ones that are very valuable for this reason. Some of my favorite ones are Hyatt, United, Singapore Airlines, Emirates, and there's so much flexibility with these partners. You can book an ANA flight through Virgin, for example, due to its airline alliance. I've gotten about five to six cents per point flying Air France and United to Europe, for example. And that goes to show you how much more valuable transferring points are here. So the question lies, should you get this card? Is it worth keeping? I think a few years ago, I would have said yes without any hesitation. But there's been so many new updated cards with very similar benefits, and some of them don't even have an annual fee. The Capital One Savior card, the Wells Fargo Autograph, and the Bill card are examples that come to mind. I will say that this card is worth getting for the Chase ecosystem, and you can get multiple cards that accumulate points rapidly in order for you to transfer out to partners. And we know Chase has the best transfer partners out there. You can get the value of the annual feedback just by a great redemption. Built does have very similar transfer partners. However, there's no sign-up bonus on that card, and there's no other cards to pair with in order to keep the points flowing. I can rack up Chase points very quickly using my Ink Cash card, for example, which gives me 5x back on my phone bill, my internet bill, as well as me purchasing Amazon gift cards to use for personal Amazon purchases. There's a 5x spend multiplier on office supply stores, so I leverage that in order to get more Chase points. Or there's a 5x rotating category on my Chase Freedom Flex for groceries and gym membership, for example, this quarter. Or even the numerous cards that offer a sign-up bonus for an enormous amount of Chase Euro points from their business card, for example. There are literally three that were just offering 90K each or 100K. The transfer partners and ecosystem is what makes this card worth keeping, and it is my most used credit card in my wallet today.